Okay. So I appreciate all of you coming today. Um, Catherine and I are so excited um, for you to be a part of, um, of the talk. And we hope that this will be a little bit of an interactive talk. So y'all are welcome to unmute yourself and ask questions uh, throughout. And also we have, we're trying to monitor chat and we'd love to be able to answer questions as we're going. So if that would make things um, a little more pertinent to um, what we're discussing at the time. And then we're gonna to try to leave some time at the end to also answer any questions you have. Um, but my name's Virginia Pierce, and this is my colleague, Catherine. Do you mind waving, Catherine? <laughs> Catherine Magner Pugh. And we're lucky we get to work here in the South Carolina State Library. I love it. And we're in the same department. So we're in library collections and services. So part of what we do is uh, reference and research service. So if you take away nothing else today, we hope that you know that you can reach out to us anytime for help. And another part of our department, we do collections um, management, digitization, all the cataloging and all of that work and acquiring materials. So it's a really fun job to work here. And what we wanted to do was to be able to share the resources that we have and give you a little bit of guidance on how to use them. Um, today. So session is being recorded and we also enabled closed captioning for any of you that need it. And there's a little ellipses down at the bottom where you can say, uh, I think I've got the subtitles on, but you could say, you know, enact subtitles and live transcript and that sort of thing that helps you. And we're also a couple of times during the talk, we created a tip sheet and we're also sharing the slides from today's talk so that you can take that away without having to write furious notes as we get. And you're welcome to have your videos on if you like, so uh, we can see each other's faces, but if you're not comfortable with that, it's no problem. And like Catherine just said a moment ago, we might mute you if somebody walks in your office or um, if there's a little bit of background noise uh, since we're wanting to record and share the video later. Okay. So this is part of a Discover the South Carolina State Library series that we're doing this year and next. And today's is the second talk. We did a civil rights. Uh, today's about newspapers. And in June, on June 16th, we're going to do one about researching your military ancestors. And it's going to use state library resources and some free online resources. So all things that you can access through us. And um, uh, if y'all ever have like, I wish I knew about government docs or what are the state documents you have in your collection, um, y'all might give us some great ideas of things we want to share in the future. So feel free to give us some suggestions. We're also excited to be starting a African-American genealogy series. It's going to go from May through October of this year. And the first talk is with Dr. Walter Curry on May 4th. And just like you registered today, you could look on the events page. You could register for uh, all the talks that are on the um, that are published so far. And you can also give us a call or email, and we'd be glad to take care of that for you. So Catherine and I are going to show you two subscription databases that the state library <clears throat> state library pays for, and that makes it free for you. And in order to access them without having to come into the library, you can get a free state library card. The only um, requirements are to be a South Carolina resident and to be 18 years old and over. Now, if you have a child that you want to be able to access the resources, we do have DISCUS K through 12 resources, and then maybe you can help them access uh, anything that we're showing you today. There's a lot of overlap in between DISCUS and what we're going to be able to share with you. And let's see. So one thing that um, we want to um, let you know is that we're here to help you, everybody statewide in the state of South Carolina. So whether you live or uh, work from home in Buford or Greenville, Dillon, Allendale, um, you can access these resources from your office or your home computer, which gives you a lot of versatility. Um, uh, to be able to do that. 
we also want to be able to um, help you if you have trouble in the future and you're looking for something like, okay, I tried what y'all showed me, but this is a specific question. We'd be glad to help you find what you're looking for, answer your research questions, connect with all of the resources that we have to offer. And um, if you're a librarian, because uh, we thought maybe a couple of you might be librarians today, uh, that you might be able to use some of these tools to help your patrons um, research their work. So just keep us in mind. We hope you'll keep us in mind for the future uh, in the work that you're doing. Okay. And so today, since we said we were going to give you some tips of how to search contemporary and historical South Carolina newspaper content, the two main ones are Newsbank, which Catherine is going to do demonstrations for, and I'm going to give you some coverage of ProQuest historical black newspapers. And one thing that's different about ProQuest from Newsbank is Newsbank is South Carolina papers, with some national. ProQuest are all um, African American papers published in U major US cities all over the country, but they do cover an amazing amount of South Carolina content. So I'm going to stop sharing and uh, Catherine, take it away. All right, let's see here. Pull this up for everybody. All right, like Virginia said, my name is Catherine and I am a uh, public services librarian here at the South Carolina State Library. Um, in my former life, I was a research and instruction librarian at a university. So I'm gonna try not to slip into my two teacher -y role for you guys today. Um, thank you guys so much for being here this afternoon. We're really excited to share these resources. And um, I know that this is these are two that are uh, extremely used here at the library. And so we're really excited to just um, kind of show people what's available as well. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. You can unmute yourself or share it in the chat. We're gonna try to catch everything. And we should have some time at the end of the session to do any live searches with you guys um, after we're finished kind of going through the resources here. Um, so to start today, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our online resources. And the quickest way to do it is to, if you go to our website and you go here to where it says programs and services and click on that and just scroll down, you'll see our online resources. And that's going to bring up our A to Z list of databases. We have over 140 different databases that are available for your use here. Um, they are uh, a, just a wide variety of them, and you have access to all of them um, with your state library card. So definitely recommend getting one of those if you don't already have one. Um, to get to NewsBank, which is what I'm going to be speaking about today, you can just click on this N right here and you'll see that it's the first one. Um, we've put all the newspapers kind of together here to make it a little bit easier to find for everybody. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on Newsbank here. Um, so Newsbank is a great, great resource that gives you access to over a thousand different US newspapers. Uh, that's a lot of information to have at your fingertips. And I'm mainly gonna focus on our South Carolina resources today because that's typically what we use at the South Carolina State Library. Um, you can see if you scroll down on the side here, you've got all your different type of uh, resources. And um, the two main ones that we use here are the Charleston Post and Courier and the State Historical and Current Collection. Now we have every single issue of both of those papers going back to when the paper was founded to today. Um, it's, it's a great resource. Uh, those subscriptions cost a lot of money. So by getting a state library card, you have access to that. And that includes the, um, the web editions as well, which is nice because sometimes those, uh, there are articles that co don't come out until after the paper's already gone to print. And so you'll have access to them. You'll see them on Facebook and things like that. And um, by logging in, you can read those without hitting that paywall, which is great. Um, we have over a hundred other South Carolina newspapers, and you can see those by clicking here on South Carolina, and it's going to pull up all of those other newspapers here for you. Uh, you can see we have over 124 resources right here. 
They're gonna be all listed in alphabetical order on the side here. Um, the only thing is we do not have every issue of those like we do for the uh, state and the post and courier. You can see right here under dates, it's listed. It'll tell you what dates we have for that particular paper. And to find a paper that you're interested in, you can just click right here. Let's say I'm interested in anything in Greenville. I'll just type that in and it'll narrow it down to just the Greenville papers. You can see the date, you can see where the paper is published and you can see what kind it is. So you can see it's the web only source for these and, and so forth. So, um, so let's go back here to Newsbank's main page. All right, so I'm really gonna get into kind of some the nitty gritty details of searching. If you're if you are a librarian, this is probably going to be a lot of what you already know. But sometimes things, uh, it's good to have a refresher on things. So, um, like I said earlier, the most used resource in Newsbank for us is the state paper. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here. So it's giving us five sources of the state paper, which is interesting because there's only one state paper, but you can see here, it's got the different dates. So this first one is gonna be from the first, when the paper first started in 1891. I believe that part of the paper was called the Columbia Record at that point too. So that's all gonna be in here. Um, and then you can see the dates that we have here. And like I said, we have that web edition article right here that is always, great to have because I don't know about you guys, but I see those articles on Facebook all the time and I want to click on them and then the paywall stops me and it's very annoying, but now you have access to them. Um, so let me see my notes here. Um, so something important to note is the format that the paper is in here. You can see there's text and image. What that means is that with an image, we'll go ahead and click on that so I can show y'all an example. So the image is going to show you a scan of the newspaper. I'm sorry, the, it's taking a little bit longer. There we go. So let's just click on a random date here. So when you click on that image format, it's literally going to show you a scan of the newspaper, like you're holding the newspaper in your hands and you're reading it back to front. Um, it's helpful if you're interested in seeing what the articles look like within the paper, or if you want to see the photographs that go along with the articles, or if you just prefer to read that way. Sometimes it's a little bit easier. You can see over here, it's got the page thumbnails on the right side where it shows you you know, pages one, two, three, four, all that kind of thing. So um, that's a great way to access that paper. We'll go back here and we'll look at the text version. Click on that same date, February 8th here. Connected this printer video on my laptop. Um, I don't know. And here you can see it, it's a little bit different here. It doesn't pop up as the image, it pops up as the text articles. And it's divided up by the different areas in the newspaper. So like the business section, news, all of that. And it'll tell you what page it's located on within the paper. And then you can click on the article and it comes up as an easy to read text article right here. It still gives you all the same information, what section it's in, who the author is, all of that but it's just a little bit easier to read. So if you're printing something out, sometimes that's a little bit more helpful to have that text. It really is just a matter of personal preference and how you prefer to read the paper. Um, I know for instance, I kind of like to use the image because I like to see how the paper looked from back to front. Um, now let's see here. All right, so now we're gonna get into searching a little bit. Um, Newsbank is fairly friendly as far as searching goes. Uh, there are a lot of different tools to help you refine and narrow down your search um, and define exactly what you're looking for. 
Some of the most common things that are searched for that we see at the front desk here are um, obituaries and family information, such as marriage announcements. Often people are looking for articles on a specific subject, like a world event, or even a piece of legislation. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit easier to search, especially with historical legislation, a little bit easier to search through um, newspapers, as opposed to going through the House and Senate journals and things like that. You can find it a little bit easier or find information about who voted what way and that sort of thing a little bit easier in a newspaper article. Um, and of course, often people are looking for specific articles that you know mention family members or things like that, and they know a specific date and things like that. Um, you can start searching in NewsBank with this basic search bar right here. Uh, as Virginia will talk about a little bit too, as librarians, we automatically like to go into that advanced search that's listed right here. And in NewsBank, what that does is it just helps you create um, more filters to run with your search. On the side here, you can see you can select a field type. I normally just leave it as the keyword and then do a date range search right here. And that really can help narrow down things. Um, so I'm gonna do a uh, just a quick little example search here. Um, I'm interested in, let's say I'm interested in finding my grandmother's obituary. I know that she died in South Carolina and it, it might be, there's a chance that it's the state. So I'm just gonna type in her name here. And I know that she died in 1995. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in here. So it's gonna search for her name and the year 1995. So let's see what comes up. All right, so you can see I have 28 results here and not all of those are gonna be exactly what I'm looking for. So, cause it's searching for Eleanor Sloan and 1995. So anytime either Eleanor or Sloan is mentioned in the state paper in 1995, it's gonna pull up those results. So if I wanna narrow it down just a little bit more, I can add in quotation marks. So it's gonna search for that exact phrase, Eleanor Sloan, instead of the individual words. So let's try that. All right, so you can see it narrowed down from 28 results to three results. And this first one is exactly what I was looking for. It is her obituary on September 14th in 1995 in the state paper. So it's gonna pull it up in that image search right there. And it has the whole article right here. And I can find things that way. Um, I will say, just beware a little bit with the uh, quotation marks. They're very useful in refining a search, but can also narrow down your search a little bit too much sometimes because it will search for those exact words in that exact order. And sometimes I've found when I'm searching for things that names aren't always spelled correctly. And so if you, or the way that you spell them, um, for instance, my last name is Pew, P-O-U, but my husband's family, some of his family spell it P-E-W or um, P-U-G-H, things like that. So you don't wanna narrow your, your search too much. Uh, so just be aware of that when you're using those quotation marks. Um, so. All right, so let's go back here. So here is our preview here. So you can also search using date ranges. And so instead of just specifically searching for 1995, let's say that I want to um, find any information about my grandmother from the year she got married to the year that she passed away. So you can do, you can search by these date ranges here. So by putting in 1939 to 1995, it's gonna search for those specific dates for her name. Great, and so as you can see, we have six articles that came up here that mention her. Um, it looks like a lot of it's related to when she passed away and things like that, but uh, it's got um, my great aunt Sarah's obituary in here where she was listed as Eleanor Sloan. Um, 
And I believe this one right here is, uh, I looked at it earlier, it's my mother who is also was Eleanor Sloan, was in a beauty pageant in Dillon, South Carolina, which we like to make fun of her for. But um, so you can find a lot of really good information just by searching in those date ranges. And that kind of helps narrow it down. If you're searching for um, an event or yeah, like a world event or things like that, and you wanna read around the event as well, using those date ranges can help broaden your search and narrow your search. So it's a really good tool to have in your back pocket. I'm gonna go back here to our state paper. And then you can also search, if you have a specific date in mind, you can type that date in, or you can browse issues by date. So this is the entire year of 2018, which is the last year in this particular section of the state. And if you just click this drop down arrow right here, it allows you to go back and choose any year. So say you know you want something from 1986, and you know the exact date you're looking for. If you select that, it'll move the calendar. And so you'll be able to select the day that you're looking for and look through the paper on that day and see if you can locate your article that way. And so sometimes that's, that's helpful if you have an exact date that you're searching for. Um, so let's say that I have found what I'm looking for. Um, let's go, I wanna go back to that. Uh, obituary of my grandmother here. So All right, so this is what I want. I want to I want to go ahead and save this information and um, be able to come back to it and, and be able to read it as I have time, as I'm doing more research here. So NewsBank has a lot of really great tools to help you save your information as you go along. Um, you can see here, you can email it to yourself. So this will email this entire page to you. Uh, you could just go ahead and print it out if you'd like. You can download it to your computer. You can set up a folder and save things to your folder. Um, what I recommend doing is if you found a particular article that you like, I like this clip feature here. So you can just select your clip and you just move this little box over to where you want it and stretch it out. All right, so, and then you can just hit, you can hit, you can either print it out and that will print out just that one little box or what I like to do, just hit download PDF. Um, if you want to, if you're writing, let's say you're doing research to write a paper or to write an article, for instance, and you wanna make sure you're including your citation, you can hit that include citation and the news bank will, will have that citation for you. So let's just say I wanna do that, just see what it looks like. Then you hit download. And then you can see it's downloading here. It'll pop up and you can save it to your computer or to a flash drive or however you wanna save your, your research here. And so you can see that it comes up as a very nice little one sheet with the, with the article that I wanted on there as well as that citation at the bottom there. So that's a really, really great feature that they do. And we, we, make a, we make use of that clip feature all the time. So, all right. So I think that's all I have for you guys today on NewsBank. Um, it's a lot of information to get in a short period of time. I will say uh, we are always, always, always happy to make appointments with you guys. Um, we can set them up for you to come to the library in person or um, we could do Zoom meetings, we can do it over the phone, we have a chat feature on our website. Um, we love what we do and we wanna make sure that you're, you're able to get the information that you're looking for. So please make use of, make use of your librarians. And um, if you guys have any questions or anything as we go, we'll, we'll go ahead and try to 
try to hit those as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and turn it back over to Virginia here. One second. Let's see. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, there you go. Thank you very much. People were still coming in, so if you don't mind following that, um, appreciate it. That was really good. Um, I always learn something. We learn from each other all the time too. So when Catherine demonstrates, sometimes we do things differently because there's more than one way to, um, to do your searches in here. So it's really helpful. Um, one thing we wanted to know is, um, we'd love to know the type of information that y'all are looking for in the newspaper. So feel free to unmute yourself um, and, and share that or ask questions. And also you're welcome to put it in the chat uh, and we will, we'd will we be glad to do some demonstrations and live searches based on, on the things you're looking for. And I'm going to show you a little bit about HopeQuest Historical Black Newspapers. So we've had this one for this database for a few years now, and I use it every day. When we get uh, research questions, this is one of my go-tos. Newsbank also, I think it just, the breadth of what you can find in them is amazing. And um, it gives you an African-American perspective. They start, the coverage is 1893 to 2010. And so over that course of uh, late 19th century to early 20th century, um, there's so many things that have happened and uh, you can research uh, people, places, communities, events. Uh, and there's so much that's happened during that time period that it's, it's just amazing. Um, I've really never gotten stumped so far. I mean, part of that is not giving up. When the first time I search and I don't find something, I keep trying uh, to try different angles and search strategies. So that's what the home page looks like. I want to show you a couple of examples because it takes so long to uh, go through and pull things up together. I wanted to give you some really good highlights of what can be found. So obviously it's very rich in civil rights materials because of the time period that it's covering. And you can have very local, uh, it may be names that you recognize, Harvey Gantt, everybody knows who that is. You might have heard of Eliza and Harry Briggs and um, uh, Coretta Scott King, people like that. Um, it also has very local people throughout the state. So there is, um, there are people that we get patron questions and learn about like Cecil Ivory, uh, George Elmore has come up, uh, he's in Columbia. And um, so you can learn very local level information. And then one neat thing is that because it goes all the way to 2010, there's time for reflection on the progress that has been made. So Reverend Joseph Delane, who participated with the Briggs and the Briggs v. Elliott case in Clarendon County, he ended up having to leave the state and lived in New York the rest of his life as a minister. And so he's they're interviewing him to reflect on participation in integration of schools. And then you start to see progress. Um, Reverend I. De Quincey Newman became the first black sen state senator in 1983 uh, since Reconstruction. So the neat articles about him. Um, Ernest Finney became the chief um, Supreme Court Justice of the state of South Carolina in 1994. So it's kind of fun to see all of those things um, in the decades afterwards, after the civil rights. And then these might be things that you um, didn't realize that you'd be able to find in the ProQuest newspapers, but because it covers uh, so much of South Carolina, part of it might've been a status symbol like to have your marriage announcement published in the Pittsburgh Courier or the Baltimore Afro-American. Afro um, but there are debutante balls, marriage announcements, um, wonderful resource for family reunions. I'm going to show you some examples later. Um, regular, ordinary people who passed away. There are obituaries from South Carolinians there. So um, as a genealogy resource, it's really wonderful. And then just searching obituaries. So there are famous 
um, people like Dr. Benjamin Mays and Dr. Matilda Evans. And then there are regular people like this gentleman was a World War I veteran uh, who passed away in the 20s, uh, widows of Reconstruction era legislators from South Carolina, a former enslaved person from Dalzell, uh, South Carolina. So I think it's really interesting um, uh, the types of people that are covered. They can be regular people and they can be um, people that contributed to, to history. Okay, so I would like to show you a little bit of live demonstration. Let's share a different screen. And uh, I think Catherine showed you how she got to the news bank papers. It's really easy. It's the same path you would take. And I didn't know if you had to, did you have to type in your bar barcode number, Catherine? I had it saved on there already, I believe, but yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I think mine might work too, that, um, but because uh, I stayed logged in. So um, when you're on site, if you brought your computer in and wanted to do work here, uh, it would know who you are. So there's one way you can do it is programs and services and come down to online resources. And you can also go in to collections, how I normally do it. You go to collections, it has everything else that you might need um, to use. Online resources. It's categorized, there's an A to Z list here and categorized under ends. There's the new bank, news bank, and here's the historical black newspaper collection. I call it ProQuest just because that's the library term, but uh, we renamed it just so it's a little bit easier for patrons. And so this is what the home page looks like. You have the ability to see all the different papers. Now it says 29. There are 10, there are 29 publications, but basically 10 titles with variations in their names over the years. And you can see the coverage for different ones if you scroll through the list. So we've got um, papers from Chicago, Los Angeles, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. I don't know what town in Michigan, but maybe it's Detroit, Michigan, um, you name it, Atlanta, that, that it covers. So I also like to do advanced searches. You could start here and just do a, a search term for anything that you like. There's no problem doing that. I like the ability to have the two rows to refine my search a little bit. Um, I'm not going to show. I'm not going to do a demonstration right away. But if you were searching for someone you thought they wrote an article or an editorial, you could always refine it by that by clicking author. For what we're doing today, anywhere is going to work for just about all of our searches. And I wanted to show you a little bit of difference too. Uh, does everybody know who Sarah Mae Fleming is? She preceded Rosa Parks, 1954, on Main Street in Columbia. Uh, she had a um, encounter with the the bus driver who the color line would move, and he told her to get up and move because. Um, more people had gotten on the bus and she was no longer in the correct spot. And she said, no, thanks. And uh, he uh, assaulted her, hit her and told her to get off the bus. And she sounded like a pretty smart person to me. She went and spoke to a lawyer um, after that and sued the um, SCENG was the bus company and won. And her case was rolled into Rosa Parks case that integrated public transportation in America. So if you wanted to search um, her name and say, well, I'd like to find out more about Sarah Mae Fleming, um, there are ways to do filters here. I usually like to do them later personally. And I'm gonna hit search. And you've got 161 results right up here. And you have the ability to sort from relevance oldest to the most recent. I use that all the time. And you can also slide your articles. This one, the first article for this particular result is 1910 and the last one was 2009. Now you might want, you said there's a lot of article hits up in this area. 
you could always say, well, I'm kind of interested in, let's see, 1930 to 1960 and, and search that you could, and then you would hit update. I'll just leave this one wide open with the beginning again. And you can also, if you chose that, you can always um, undo it if you wanted to. So there are some pretty good exalt, uh, results and it looks like it's, it's hitting a lot of the articles um, about um, the bus case when she um, sued the SCNG company. So that's doing pretty good. We could go through and look at these records. It refines it just a little bit and probably takes out a lot of noise. Uh, just like the um, El Catherine's Eleanor Sloan example in these banks. There's some overlap. This time I got 29 results, probably looking for the right Sarah Mae Fleming, and then um, can go through these results that uh, took out a lot of the um, possible junk in my um, research articles. And there's a particular article I wanted to show you. We could look at any of these um, when you're looking at the record. So you can see the which paper it's coming from. Afro-American is Baltimore, Maryland, uh, December 8th, 1956. That's probably page three. And if you want to see more in there, it pulls up the article. And one nice thing that's a little bit different from Newsbank is ProQuest organized. They took a lot of trouble and they pull up the article directly for you. You don't have to go find it on the page and all of it is right there for you. So if there was a second page, they went and found that for you and put, uh, I think a couple of my examples show it, they'll put both pages where the article um, was found there. And that's a huge thing uh, to me. Another um, Part of it that I use all the time is suggested sources. So they are also recommending like these might be articles that you would also like to look at uh, since you liked this particular one. So I could print it from here. I could download it and rename it. I'm going to just do it. Always in spelling, let's see. And then I could put that on my desktop and just start a folder of um, articles while I'm doing my researches. And I think it comes out really nice. It's already clipped for you, everything's there. If you also, I think, I don't know if you can see this like I can, um, the, here's where you have the ability to do a citation, email this to yourself or someone else, print it um, and download. So a couple of the features there for you. So, like I said, if I, um, let's see, show, show you another article. Go for South Carolina Constitution. Okay, so here's another article I wanted to show from 1955. And in this time, it shows you, it pulled up one page here. And then it went through the trouble of pulling that second page. So you didn't have to go through the, the issue of the newspaper and it's all there for you. And these also come up looking really nice when you download it and print it. So that's a, a big plus in my book, I'm gonna give them an A. So when I go over to the suggested resources, I could follow this article. And this is by John McRae. He was the editor of the Lighthouse and Informer in Columbia um, for like 40s through the 60s. And he also, some of the reason there's South Carolina content in here, he's one of the editors that contributed articles to all of these other papers. So he has um, editorials in the Chicago Defender, tells what's going on on the ground level um, um, from what's going on. One nice thing I just learned the other day because I was poking around I could go in and find more articles now that I know who John McRae is and go through and read all of his. And I could also say, hmm, let me see what the earliest article he wrote was. And there's one from 1941. 
face paintings on here or something that you could look at. His editorials were called The Need for Changing, which is kind of neat. And some of his uh, articles, like Majeska Simpkins, who also contributed editorials over the years, they can be very acerbic and witty and um, really interesting. So maybe that's right, one reason why we, you know, subscribe 18 years old and older because a, a younger person would have to kind of, you know, see perspective in the different Thank content. Thank you for calling COVID-19 Fuel Systems. My name is Kumitra, I'm a friend of our seven. I don't know if that was, <laughs> didn't sound like a question. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, keep that in mind that it's given you um, uh, his perspective and an African-American perspective. And sometimes it can be, um, some of the content is pretty tough to read about things that happened or what they were going through at the time. Okay. So one really neat, um, if I'm gonna do an op, modify my search, I can come back in and stick with advanced search. You can come back in, say you changed all sorts of things. It's gonna remember all those and you can clear the form and, and start all over. And if you're searching names, you could have a Mrs. Benjamin E. Mays, Mrs. Benjamin Mays, or if you're looking for him, there's so many um, varieties or ways that a name could be presented in the newspapers. You may know, I'm going to search Matilda Evans, and they might use her initials. They might just say Dr. Evans, that sort of thing. So um, one really cool thing that I learned was to use this operator and there's a variety of ways you can do it so I want to find Matilda near you do a forward slash and I could say well within five words of her last name Evans so if she if they include her middle name or um, um, don't include her first name at all but it's in the article within five words it will show up that way so this part on your tip sheet is an N for number, and you can change that number to whatever you want. It could be 553, doesn't matter. Uh, there's also another way you could, they let you put an in, in, in here to do the same thing. I like kind of typing it out because I'm trying to ask for the words to be near each other. Okay. Everybody with us still? If you have any questions, let us know. So I was looking for Matilda Evans within five terms of each other and let's see what we get. So here's one and that kind of shows you an example that if I had put Matilda Evans in quotes, I would have missed this one because it had A for her middle name, Arabella. And you could look there. And in 1915, which is really neat that it's that old, there's a really cool article about her. Uh, she shows up in the papers a lot because she was very involved. She adopted children. She was a businesswoman. She was a physician. Uh, she's supposed to be the first um, African-American female doctor in the state. Uh, so she got here early on and started working to help people. Okay. One thing you could do, so we're thinking about South Carolina. You could use these papers here again to look for something on the national level. And just the other night, I was watching the nightly news and they talked about the president signing the anti-lynching bill and that they had tried, they had introduced 200 bills over a 120 year period trying to get this one law passed. And I thought that was pretty interesting. You could stop there and say just anti-lynching. You could all the suggestions that they're um, telling you. Um, I think I did bill since it didn't get passed till just last week. And I'm gonna do a search. So this is a kind of a nice way to kind of back out and do a broad search on the national level. And I think this is also another, since I'm trying to look at the history of the bill, this is a great time to look at the articles chronologically. 
And the very first article here is 1902. On that. And I did a little background history. It said a gentleman by the name of George Henry White introduced the first bill in Congress. And he was the only African-American serving in Congress at that time uh, when he submitted the bill. And it's changed names over the years. Um, but they talk about why it's needed and um, a lot of good context information. So if you were a student or helping a student, I think these are wonderful um, articles to think about. Let's see if I want to share. Another good thing is knowing that there's um, earlier historical um, information is different in Newsbank and the African American papers. So there might be a different perspective um, in that first half of the 20th century of um, how the topic is covered in those two papers. Okay. I'm gonna show you one more. Are there any librarians here today? <laughs> we were hoping there were. Yes, 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 awesome. Hey, Laura. Um, I wanted to see about public libraries and integration. And when that happened, and we have this really cool patron, patron that comes in She's always doing neat research down in Calhoun County. And uh, she said there was a separate African-American library started by an individual in their town. And then there was the, the county public library that didn't yet, um, wasn't yet integrated um, when she grew up. And so she's doing a lot of primary resource um, searching and uh, oral history interviews in her community. I hope it turns into a book that we can collect one day. Uh, but so she's um, reaching out and asking questions um, periodically. I thought this would be a fun one to, to look up. And as y'all might know, you could probably, it could be public library, it could be, you know, all, all sorts of different ways. You could put a wild card, which would get any of those, anything that might come up after it. Um, in your search. Okay. You might also use different search terms, integration, segregation, uh, that sort of thing. And we've got over a thousand results. This one looks neat. It's about labor and liberty. And I think, let me just do it by relevance this time and see what comes up. There was one about Greenville, South Carolina that popped up early on. And <laughs> it doesn't always mean that you're gonna get the same search results when you search, but that's okay. Let's just look at one in Mississippi. And uh, so this is gonna be an interesting article that includes integrating public libraries in their in their article. Okay. Oh, and another thing that we could do, so that was kind of searching at the national level. I could modify my search and I could add a row and I could say South Carolina. And I think what I might do is put black gray. Just change it up, see what happens. Okay, so here's one. This is in Atlanta, possibly. Atlanta Public Library. Somewhere in here, it must mention South Carolina. So we're included in some other southern states that are not yet integrating their libraries. So it's about 1250 and we could um, do some searches for you guys if you have any topics you want to share. And I apologize, while I've been talking, I haven't been able to see chat. Um, 
Mr. Strait, we could try tornadoes in South Carolina or however, we could try start off with yours if you didn't mind. Well, I, there were some great questions in the chat, so I just wanted to cover some of them real quick. Um, oh, sure. Somebody had some questions about citation. And um, so Newsbank doesn't do a great job of explaining the different types of citation and stuff like that. They kind of expect you to have that knowledge. And um, I sent the link in the chat for the OWL at Purdue, which is the online writing lab at Purdue University, kind of the gold standard for citation. So if that's something that you need some information about, uh, I highly recommend that resource or feel free to call or, or come in the library, talk to one of us and we can help you with that. Um, we also had a question about if we had any international newspaper resources. So if you go back to that um, A to Z database list under N, you'll see several different other newspaper resources, including um, Newspaper Source Plus and Newswires, both of which have some international um, components, I believe. So uh, that's, that's a good resource to have too. Um, we get a lot of this through, you, you'll see that little, um, orange and green sign next to some of these uh, newspaper resources. And that is something that comes to us through Discus. So that's a great, a great resource as well. Um, we also had a lot of questions about if you're out of state being able to access these resources. Unfortunately, you can't get a library card if you're out of state, you have to be a South Carolina resident. But what you can do is email us or call us and we will work with you and try to get you the information that you're looking for out of our resources. Um, somebody had a lot of questions about the, our genealogy resources. We have a great LibGuide that Virginia, our resident genealogy expert here, put together um, that has a lot of the different resources available to us here at the State Library and some of the other state organizations that we work closely with, like um, the State Archives and things like that. So this is a great jumping off point if you're starting to do your genealogy research. Um, if you are out of state, I also encourage you to reach out to your local public library. A lot of public libraries will invest money in some of these genealogy resources that are very expensive to have as individual memberships to, like Ancestry and things like that. So that's always a great resource, and I definitely recommend reaching out to those, those public libraries um, to help you find that information as well. Um, and yeah, and if you contact us, we will do whatever we can to help you access that information even if you're out of state. We send tons and tons and tons of PDFs and everything out to people all over the country. So please do not hesitate to contact us with, with any of those kind of questions. Great. I don't know if you can see our page, the genealogy guide now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, there are some free resources that we put on the guide. So Chronicling America is one through the Library of Congress, but there's uh, like 300,000 pages of South Carolina content there. And they have continued to expand on that in this historical newspapers. So you can go into these and do some searching and, um, and search across. It just won't be the exact papers we cover today. And thanks Catherine for saying, just reach out to us. We help people all over the country and sometimes uh, internationally with their questions. And if we have access to it, we will help you find that information and, and share what we came with you. And if you were ever in the area coming down our way, a lot of people contact us before they make a trip. And um, we'd be able to tell you what we have before you come. You can bring your computer here, research on site, and then we're always glad to show uh, there's so many other great libraries and archives in our state um, that you will be able to reach out to them and go visit them as well. And let's see, do you mind if I show the news bank? Go for it, absolutely. Okay, just wanted to show you, um, you could come down here to South Carolina and you're not worrying about which newspaper it might be in. And we're doing advanced search. And so it's kind of showing you, it's gonna search across all 124 there. And tornado. Mr. Strait, are you still there? Yes, I am. Are there any years that you would wanna look for? Um, why don't we look at 1984? Okay. 
So almost 700 results. This one looks like kind of a headline. We could click on that. December 30th. This is kind of big. I like to hide this little guy here and back out just to the waist. So you can kind of toggle around and read the article. Bennettsville was one of the areas that got hit. And is that the kind of content that you're looking for when you're researching? Uh, yes, that would get me started. Uh, one of the things I would probably be looking for are things like damage estimates and uh, um, maybe even to look at some photos of the damage that occurred. So uh, yeah, this, this would get me started. That'd be good. And since this one happened December 30th, the paper was published, what we could do is go back to results. Any of the damage stuff may be afterwards. So you could even say in the couple of years afterwards, if you're looking for a tornado that happened this, in 84, maybe insurance and that sort of thing um, um, might kick in. And again, I would possibly put oldest to see what was hit. I felt like that one in Newberry, um, I felt like that one happened in the spring too. But um, you could also put a community name. We were just chit chatting for that at the beginning and see if any thing came up. Okay, here's an article March. And so I'm not sure if they would have the damage estimates there, but um. Maybe that would be a start. We could also help you search for some of these if you um, want to follow up with us. Catherine, did you mention that you can do a virtual virtual book a library appointment? I don't think I did, but you can do that. Um, you can set it up and we will meet with you over Zoom. Um, this is especially helpful if you're out of state and we can set up a time to kind of go through. We can do the similar to what we've done today and share screens back and forth and and get all your questions answered. That's great. Uh, we also have a live chat, which is nice. Um, and I can show you where you would find these two resources. You can just go back home to the State Library. And I don't know if you can see my Zoom screen there. Um, right on the home page, you can type in a question. I'm not sure who's on the desk right now, but we try to all have it open. Um, and you can just type that in. You can put your name, doesn't matter, and say start chat. And one of the librarians will um, hopefully be looking out for it. They'll hear a little beep and um, start talking with you. And then if you wanted to ever make an appointment, you could schedule an online appointment. And what we've been doing is uh, Tuesdays and Fridays from 10 to 12, you could make an appointment. And we'd be glad to. Um, uh, meet with you just like on a Zoom call and um, walk you through. One nice thing is that we're able to demonstrate. We can see your screen if you were willing to share it and see what trouble you were having or how you're searching something. And we can also show you and demonstrate just like we did today and kind of walk you through specific information that you need. So um, that was kind of one of the nice silver linings from the pandemic. We hadn't offered that before and maybe like other libraries, we're trying to be creative and reach out to more people. Uh, while we were temporarily closed. Are there any other questions? I know y'all's time is valuable and it's close to one. Thanks, Melissa. I'm sorry, it gives you a funny message. It says now they think you're in the library because this is a consortium that we're part of. Um, we will process your card and we will put it in the mail to you tomorrow or this afternoon. And so um, appreciate your signing up. Thanks for doing that. And if you wanted to get a library card, you can come down here. I think you can also Google state library and library card. And that's how um, you can apply online, read some of the, the rules. And it doesn't want a whole lot of information from you. 
um, but you, anything that's asterisk, you have to put in there. And then that helps us, it comes into our system. We see it in, in, the, um, in the morning and we process them usually once a day in the morning. Any other questions we'd be able to answer for you? I don't know if everybody could see the documents because people were coming in. I could um, upload the documents one more time if all of you did not see the tip sheet. And we, we wanted to upload this PowerPoint slides just in case you wanted to see that information. So those are both there for you if you need them. I'd be glad to stick around and answer any questions you have. But I appreciate your coming today. I know Catherine does too. Thanks, McCabe. Thanks, Mr. Peterson. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. Melissa. Thanks for coming today. This is great. You're welcome. All right, well, just um, let's see. I don't know if I put it on there, but it's on the, um, let me show this one last thing if any of you are still there. And we'll share the last little bit of the PowerPoint. And it's got our information on there for you. Five stars. Thanks, Brianne. <laughs> um, so here's our reference desk. You can email us, call us. You can reach out to both Catherine and myself. And um, we're here Monday through Friday, anytime. Thanks, Ms. Mims. Hi, NAB. All right, Catherine, you think this is a good time to, to wrap up? I don't see any questions. Yeah, that sounds good. Just remember to reach out to us, um, especially you out-of-staters who need some information. We are here for you guys. Great. Okay, I'm going to stop record. Thanks, Nancy.